Um, so first up here, the sliding filament theory is the theory of how muscle fibers or fibers slide past each other. How do you cause a contraction? So the activation by nerves causes the myosin heads or those cross bridges to attach to binding sites on the thin filament. So for each of these, the myosin heads bind to the next site of the thin filament and pull them towards the center of a sarcomere. So if you remember from a couple of videos ago, you had the thicker filament, so if these were the thick filaments or the myosin filaments, they looked kind of like this. And then we had the thin filaments on either side of those. And as we drew these, we'll notice that these don't actually get shorter and more compacted together. What really happens are these thin filaments are just going to slide further this way. And this one on this side is going to slide this way. So they're just um, sliding past each other. So they're pulling, um, the thin fil filaments are being pulled towards um, the center of each sarcomere. Now, each cross bridge, so I'm going to go back up here. Each cross bridge is going to attach and detach several times. Whoops. Spelling things wrong. So it's going to attach and detach several times. during a contraction. And then um, what happens is these actually are going to look as if they're shortened, um, but they're really just um, pulled closer together, not actually shortened. Okay, so the continued action, so that's again, if you have these myosin, subunits, the continued action of these um, actin subunits keep pulling um, past each other and getting closer to the center of the sarcomere. So if this was the sarcomere, they're going to, these ones are moving this way, those ones are moving this way. So that continued action causes a sliding of the myosin along the actin. And the result is the muscle is shortened or contracted. And remember, again, these um, the myofilaments are sliding, okay, not getting shorter. So even though we use this word shortened right here, we're really talking about they're sliding past each other. Um, so next up, the sarcoplasmic reticulum will then release calcium ions so the myosin bridges can attach to actin. And... That might not make sense yet, so let's go ahead and move on, um, and hopefully we'll be able to explain it better. So the dark red ones are the myosin, and then the little kind of curvy blue ones there are the actin. And what happens is, can you see that there's, it almost looks like there's little um, buds or little hairs coming off of each one. Do you see how they kind of look like they're little pokies on each of those myosin subunits? Well, what happens is those myosin heads are going to bond um, or interact with the actin, okay? When that happens, and the, the reason they do that is because of calcium. So the calcium is going to work with these um, other subunits called um, troponin and tropomyosin, which um, we're going to look at a little bit later. You don't really have to know those two words except for um, they're going to bond with each other and eventually um, those cross bridges are going to pull and then it's going to pull these actin closer to the sarcomere. Um, so eventually this is what the contracted muscle fiber is going to look like where you have these actin subunits that are slid past each other so it looks like the whole thing is shorter so if we kind of draw our comparison it looks like it's shorter but it's really just contracted together okay so here's what it looks like in detail and this is the part that you're actually going to act out in class in a um, in a maybe a day or two um, so the myosin filament is this and these were those little um, hair-like structures that were 
um, out of them. And these little purple things, these are the troponin and the tropomyosin. And what these do are, the whole purpose of these is they're going to enable, or they're going to make it so the myosin filament cannot bind whenever it wants. What happens is you have calcium that comes in and it interacts with each of those um, subunits and it removes those so then the myosin can actually go in here and bond. Now there's nothing, you don't really have to write any of this. If you want to pause and read it, that would be fantastic, but you don't have to write each of those down. So then the next step here is that the calcium, just like I was kind of trying to write in there, the calcium comes and it interacts with those binding sites. And what happens is those binding sites now are open, which enable these myosins to go in and to link together. So then what happens is there will be this calcium is going to interact with this subunit. This will be removed and then this myosin is then going to move to that one and then it'll move to this one and then to this one so it'll um, eventually get this contracted appearance. Okay so eventually this is sort of a cleaned up version of all of that. Um, eventually it'll cause these actin filaments or these kind of purplishy ones. These are going to slide closer together and these myosin subunits are going to continue to bind to each of those opening um, opened sites on the thin filament. So that wraps up the sliding filament theory. I hope that it makes more sense but we will do this class activity that I think um, will really help you to understand the sliding filament theory.